UCLA football fans, here we go. Hey. It's been a while. Coming up slowly. <laughs> There's the smile. What's up? X-Man's back. What's Xavier back? Suofilo. It's nice to be home. Yeah, man. Nice to be yeah, home. Nice. Uh-huh. All right, let's start this. Uh, let's start just kind of with your decision to come back to UCLA. Um, I know that was a taxing one for you. You know, you had to decide whether to come back to a place that didn't have your old coach. Mm-hmm. So, so talk about first hearing that Coach Neuheisel was fired and then your first impressions of Coach Mora. Well, <clears throat> obviously, you know, Coach Neuheisel was my boy. He um, gave me my scholarship, yeah. and when I heard he was fired, I was I was nervous, yeah. <laughs> you know, because, you know, with me not being there, it was only on his word, I guess, in the program, and so when he wasn't there, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to come back. Yeah. I'd heard a few names speculating where we were going as far as coach-wise, and I heard a few coaches turn us down, turn us down, turn us down, so I was getting nervous. And when I heard Coach Moore got the job, I kind of looked more into Coach Moore, who he was. Honestly, the only thing I knew about Coach Moore was his dad was the one who said playoffs. You know <laughs> what I mean, like on the commercial. Yeah. And I didn't even know that Coach Moore had coached the Falcons and, you know, been on the Seahawks too and had been the 49ers offensive coordinator for a long time. And so when I found out that he had NFL experience, he had a dad that was a legendary coach in the NFL who he, very, he looked up to. I knew he knew what he was doing. Yeah. And, you know, they said that he'd never coached college before, but yeah. I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't worried about it because, you know, if he was that successful in the NFL, you know, sometimes it's not like that, but I was hoping that, yeah. you know, I was, I was confident that way. So, uh, you know, three coaches came out to see you mm-hmm. um, when you arrived back, and did you come back from, I know you went out to Florida, right? Mm-hmm. It was Tallahassee? Yeah. And then you told me Coley, Alabama? Foley. Foley, excuse uh, me, Foley, Alabama was your second destination? Uh, no, no, I started in Mobile, okay. Alabama. Okay. My second place was Foley, Alabama, and my last and final place was Tallahassee. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you came back from Tallahassee? Yeah. Okay. So they traveled out to, to Utah to see you. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Tell me about that just for, you know, that first meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you just told me you're a huggable guy. So yeah. I, I bet that they just threw their arms around you. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I didn't. I saw Angus at the door first, Coach yeah. Angus, and I gave him a hug. And, uh, because I knew him before. Yeah. It's good to see him. Then I gave the other guy hugs, and it was, it was really good. They uh, spent a couple hours there just relaxing, getting to know my family, talking to my brothers and sisters, making my parents feel comfortable. Just yeah. very, very impressive. And basically getting some one-on-one time with each of them, telling them what they kind of wanted to do, what they saw, yeah. and, you know, or telling me they were looking forward to getting to know me. You know, so they didn't come in with a pitch like, you know, okay, well, we heard a lot about you, and this is how it's going to be. They didn't come in with a, we don't care what we heard about you that way attitude. Mm-hmm. They came in with a, you know, we've seen film on you. We've heard a lot about you. We're excited. Uh, we're new at this, too. And so we need you, You like, we would love to you to be a part of this and to understand this is how we're at the direction we're headed. Yeah. And so I was all in then. You know, uh, you're coming back to a team that's, quite frankly, been pretty much in disarray. Um, there, there was some... Pretty brutal losses that last year. Um, Coach Noel was fired towards the end of the year and everything. Um, at any point, you know, you're, you're on your mission, so you're not really focused on this. Mm-hmm. But at any point, you know, was it more negative than positive? Were, you know, were you, say, less than 50% in coming back? Or were you pretty solid in saying, well, as long as I just like this next guy or as long as I believe in his vision, I'll be back no matter what? Um, yeah, I, I thought I would say it's more like that. The very, the very end you said. Yeah. I was always wanted to come back to UCLA, and it was a little bit tough because of the last two seasons because they weren't doing well. Yeah. And so naturally, you know, that's just business. If your coaches aren't winning, then it's only a matter of time that yeah. someone was going to get fired. Something was going to happen. Um, you know, Coach Chow left first, and Coach Newhouse got fired. And so my original coaches had left, but I still felt like I loved UCLA enough that I wanted to come back. Yeah. And I knew that if I was just very interested to see who they were going to pick up as a coach because I knew that you know, I guess it got to the point where they wanted they want a solid guy who would turn things around, you yeah. know. And so, uh, yeah, I just I considered transferring, like, to a point of only if UCLA wouldn't take me back. Yeah. You know, that makes sense. And so I wasn't really That talking, wasn't going to happen. I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't really <laughs> talking to any coaches. I wasn't yeah. talking to anybody, really. It was just kind of rumors that speculated, you know. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, you do mean a lot <laughs> to, to, to these people. No, it's um, good to know. Uh, yeah, you should see the comments I get. Um, Xavier, you know, 
we talked about this, but I know the fans want to hear it directly from you. Mm -hmm. uh, how have you changed in these two years, and, and how is this, you know, looking back on it, why do you think that this was maybe necessary for you? Well, I wonder that all the time. You know, I really kind of have been curious about that. I just guess I would say that my decision to go on a mission has, I guess, forever changed me as a man and as a person. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of guys who go on missions who come back and they're still the same. They don't change. But your mission can change you if you allow it to and if you push yourself to. I'm just grateful for the opportunity that I have to go and, you know, serve my Lord and Savior. I was grateful that I got to serve other people yeah. to really kind of, I guess, build those things and those qualities and, and really instill them in my life where I'd be able to apply them as a student, as an athlete, as a father, as a husband, you know. And so I'm grateful, you know, look back on it now. I had to go at that time so I could come back and be prepared right here. Yeah. And, you know, I'm so excited to come back and play football again. Like, <laughs> football has been my life dream, you know, my whole time. But now, yeah. after serving that, I have a wider perspective to be more balanced and not just to be a football player, but to be a football player and everything else. Yeah. And have ambitions to be successful, to get a degree, yeah. to use an education to be able to support myself, to support my family, to be able to help others to succeed as well. Yeah. And I believe that, you know, by me doing that, that kind of just molded me more into the person, got me on the path that I wanted to be, yeah. especially as an example and role model. I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm not close, not even close to being perfect, but it really put things into perspective. It made me, I guess, love service, be more charitable, be a loving person, to really care about things that, that mattered and have great perspective and change yeah. my priorities in life. And so um, just... I guess I can say I'm a better person for it, and I don't know. I love the experience, but I'm glad that I'm back and so I can play again. Yeah. <laughs> so. You're a wise man at 21, Xavier Sufila. <laughs> uh, I got two questions left. The, yep. the first question, we have to get down to brass tacks because they're going to freak out if I don't ask it. Okay. So you weigh 310, okay. and you, you've been pretty similar. I mean, talk about you as a football player, you know, for <clears> 20 <throat> seconds. and Let's see. You know, how quickly do you think you can get back to... Is it about getting back to where you would have been at 21 had you been here for two years, or is it about just progressing from where you were, say, as a freshman? It's progressing to where I was from a freshman, I think. Um, I'm not going to try and like force everything to get back into it. I do expect to be in tip-top shape come fall, but from winter and now into spring, I'm expecting to, you know, this winter, to, this off season, to just work hard. Yeah to kind of go through spring and see where I'm at, where I end up. And then this summer, I really work hard and analyze that. So by the time I get into fall camp, I know exactly where I'm at and where I'm going. Um, and I, I guess, obviously, for selfish reasons, I'd love to be exactly where I should be when I'm 21, you know, by the time fall comes. Yeah. And I think I can get close. Yeah. I'm just going to take it slowly and work hard, push myself, and not try to, you know, force my body to just get back into it. Yeah. But I will... I will push as much as I can, and I think I've got great coaches and great trainers and stuff to help me be able to get there. And so, yeah, we'll see. But by springtime, I expect to be moving around and flying. So. Last thing I have for you is how bad do you want to hit someone? <laughs> Come on, man. I, tell you, I want to hit somebody bad, man. <laughs> I haven't had pads on two years, man. My last what happened game, to this nice, passive, life? charitable? But, not, you talk football for two seconds, and all of a sudden I'm you're ready to kill you, someone. Man. It's like a different beast on the yeah. field. You can be a great guy and all that, but when you turn on game mode, and I'm not talking about dirty or being, you know, yeah. you know, you know, cussing up a storm or anything. I'm just talking about when you turn on game mode, you don't have any friends. You worry about doing your job. It's like a tryout, I guess. You know, yeah. it's like a job. Consider football now more of a job. I'm a student athlete, you know, and you know when you do your job, and you, especially when you love your job, you usually do it well. And so, man. I just can't wait to get back on there, put on the pads because I want to hit again. So see that smile, start, folks. Start I guarantee the UCLA fans who are watching this right now are smiling just as wide. <laughs> Good stuff, Xavier Suafilo, the X Man, back, back All in right. business. Yeah, man. Thanks so much, buddy. No problem.